All right, hello boys and girls and moms and dads. Welcome to Heroes Modern School Academy. This is fifth grade English, week number six and day number one. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about reading and comprehension and that is what you are gonna see on the board here in just a moment. Um, and the way this is gonna go is we're gonna turn to page number 40 of our workbook. So if you have your workbook, download it over there. Please turn to page number 40. If not, you're welcome just to watch on the board. The content's going to be there in front of you as well. So you are going to listen to this particular reading. Uh, we're going to read it on the screen. You're going to follow along with us, try to listen. And then right after that reading exercise, we are going to turn to some questions, which we are going to be answering together. And you are going to document your answers in complete sentences as a fifth grade student was come through the fourth grade and the third grade and the second grade first grade curricula of Heroes Modern Homeschool Academy. All right, can you do that for me? All right, so pick up your workbook and let's try to read together. Once upon a time, there was a child named Sarah. Sarah was a kind and gentle child, but she was also shy and often found it difficult to speak up when she saw her friends arguing or fighting. She would often just walk away, hoping that the problem would go away on its own. One day, Sarah was walking through the village when she saw two of her friends, Jacob and Isaac, fighting over a toy. Jacob wanted the toy, but Isaac was not willing to share it. Sarah could see that the argument was quickly turning into a physical fight. Instead of walking away as she usually did, Sarah remembered a story she had heard in Sunday school about Jesus, who said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, Matthew 5, 9. Sarah took a deep breath and approached her friends. She calmly asked them to stop fighting and listen to her. She reminded them that they were friends and that it was more important to get along than to fight over a toy. She suggested that they take turns playing with the toy and even offered to play with them both. Jacob and Isaac were surprised by Sarah's words, and they both agreed to her solution. They put down the toy and started playing together, with Sarah joining in too. Sarah felt a sense of joy and gratitude as she watched her friends playing together. She realized that she had made a difference by being a peacemaker. She had helped her friends to find a solution that made everyone happy, and she had prevented a fight from breaking out. From that day on, Sarah made it her mission to be a peacemaker wherever she went. She learned that even though she was a child, she could still make a big difference in the world by helping people to be right with each other and God. The story of Sarah teaches us the importance of being a peacemaker. It reminds us that we should always strive to resolve conflicts peacefully and to spread love and kindness wherever we go. By doing so, we can become children of God and bring peace to our world. All right, so I believe you got a chance to follow along with us as we read that particular reading together. So we are gonna right now try, try to answer a few questions over there. So day number six, uh, day number one, week number six, the story was about being peacemakers. All right, question number one. What was Sarah's solution to her friend's problem? All right, so Sarah had two friends. Um, her friends' names were Jacob and Isaac, and they were fighting over a toy. And Sarah, being a very peaceful person, normally would have walked away. But one day, she got prompted not to walk away. And she stood there and simply, guess what? Approached her friends and calmly asked her to stop fighting. That's what she did. And then she reminded them that they were friends and it was more important that they get along than fight over a toy. So she simply suggested that they take turns with playing with the toy. All right, so that's what Sarah did for them. So I want you right now to document your answer 
with your own words as a fifth grade student. All right. Um, question number two. What aspect of Sarah's personality was overcome when she challenged her friends rather than walking away? Well, the aspect of Sarah's personality that was overcome over here was the fact that she was a kind and gentle person, but, well, that's not a bad thing, but she was also shy. Did you see that? So that's the aspect of Sarah's personality that had to be overcome to be a peacemaker in this situation. So please go ahead and document that answer with your own words. Peacemakers help others to be right with God. Is this true or false? Well, the answer is going to be categorically true because we can see how Sarah helped her friends, Jacob and Isaac, to be right with God. Because if you're fighting each other and you're cursing at each other, well, you're not going to be right with God. So, but Sarah stepped in over there and helped her friends to be right with each other and then to be right with God as well. Well, that's going to be a great lesson for all of us. All right, S story number, uh, question number four. What does the story teach us? Well, the story teaches us to be peacemakers. Don't be bashful to tell people the right thing to do, even though they may not be doing the right thing at the moment. Step up to the scene and tell them calmly with the power of God with you and tell them the right thing to do with the help of the Holy Spirit. You can be a peacemaker in your environment. All right. So that's going to be the answer to question number four. So the thing we are going to do right now is to go to the vocabulary building section of today's lesson which what we're going to do is we're going to look at some new words that potentially we hadn't heard of before. So words like shy, like argue, like fight, like being a peacemaker even, like conflict and strife. And the way we typically try to do that, uh, we like to do that is to go to your dictionary. If you have a paper copy of dictionary, you may bring it out. If not, you're welcome just to use this online dictionary, which is going to be from dictionary.com. You're going to go to your browser. Tell your mommy or your daddy to open a browser and type in, for example, one of the words that we learned today uh, was the word shy. So let's look at what shy means. All right. So the word shy, you're going to type it over there and you're going to press enter. Well, the word shy means being bashful. It means being easily frightened away. It means being timid. And how do we pronounce the word shy? If you click on this audio button over there, Shy. Shy. It is shy. 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 All right, here you go. And in the IPA version of it, it is spelled like this. You're going to see this fun looking symbol. Anytime you see the symbol, maybe in your paper copy of dictionary, it's going to be pronounced as shh. Okay? So that's how it sounds. Shh. So in this case, shy. Okay? The, the, the word I over here, if he has an upper horizontal line, and a lower horizontal line, that's going to be a long I, which is going to sound like I, okay? So if it's a short I, it's just going to be like a single vertical line down. Well, that's the IPA version of it. But the phonetic respelling version of it, they actually spell it out for you as SH, which is going to be SH, and then A-H-Y, I, okay? Shy. All right. What's the meaning of the word shy? Being bashful, being resentful, it's an adjective. Okay, so you can have shyer or shyest. Okay, so this person is a little bit shyer than the other person. <laughs> well, it's still part of English. All right, did you get something from it? All right, I sure hope so. So please go ahead and do that exercise. You know, you're going to type in all the words into your dictionary to understand firstly how is the word going to be enunciated? How is the word going to be pronounced? Then understand the meaning of the words in the IPA version of it, in the phonetic respelling version of it. And moms and dad, you can help your child to do that and create exercises around these. You can, you can form sentences with these new words that they've never heard of before. And you will be homeschooling the right way with biblical morality. All right. Did you get something from it? I sure hope so. Well, remember God cares about you and so do we. Bye. I'll be your hero's body and as you study with heroes born.